Hey everyone, welcome back to another Kingdom Hearts 4 video. Today is going to be a very interesting topic because Kingdom Hearts 4 may go open world. Surprising of how that may sound, it, they may go that direction. I was surprised that other Kingdom Hearts creators didn't really acknowledge this idea or direction that it's going to. And I understand. The reason why is because we always known Kingdom Hearts to be the, uh, I guess you could say, open linear action uh, gameplay that we all know. That, that's what Kingdom Hearts is really known for, like literally throughout the whole entire series. Also, I think only one of the Kingdom Hearts content creator that I know, which is Gamers Join, aka Cynical, he sort of talked about this, that Kingdom Hearts may go open world. And yeah, again, I was very surprised that no other has talked about this. So I think this is going to be a very interesting topic to, I guess, say just to have something to think about before coming into Kingdom Hearts 4. And the big question is, why do I really believe this? And the reason why is simply because of how it's very emphasized in the trailer that is shown. Literally, when I first reacted to the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer, and as soon as we saw Strelitzia talking to Sora and describing Quadratum, what she literally says in the trailer is that literally this world, this Quadratum, is full of life. Things to see. And that's why at first the assumption is obviously to, to my head is like, oh, open world? Because they wouldn't really necessarily put that line in a trailer unless they're really trying to advertise what what direction they're going for in Kingdom Hearts. Just its art style itself, they're already advertising that Kingdom Hearts 4 is going full on realism, especially in Quadratum. So the same concept can be applied to its dialogue presented in the trailer. Because what are you going to do to reel people in when you're showcasing this new product? You gotta be very descriptive of certain things, of what the CERN product is and what it can do. Now a lot of you may be thinking like, oh, Tim, you're really stretching this whole thing. You're overanalyzing what Strelitzia was saying in the trailer. And I may be, but also in the official press release of Kingdom Hearts and their feed of one of their announcements, and I quote this, in the announcement trailer, Sora makes a triumphant return with an updated look at the beginning of an epic new storyline titled the lost master arc beginning with sora facing off in a boss battle against a giant enemy players are introduced to the quadratum a large expansive city set in a gorgeous realistic world unlike anything ever seen before in the kingdom hearts series and again it's really emphasized of how large expansive realistic, gorgeous, and something we have never seen ever in a Kingdom Hearts game. So it really seems, especially to me, that the game for Kingdom Hearts 4 is not going to be like any other Kingdom Hearts game we actually experience. This is actually going to be completely different. It's going a whole new direction. And in a recent article that Famitsu did, it was an interview with Tetsuya Nomura, this was a very recent in interview. This was literally in April 14th, 2022. This is translated by KH13, or at least the source is from KH13 with the translation. In the interview, Nomura says that Sora's apartment is located in Ayama, Tokyo, and it will act as the base slash hub for the game's early stages. So I'm like, oh, that's really something different why why would they really why would he even be talking about that we definitely had a hub slash base before in the kingdom hearts series especially in kingdom hearts 3 we had twilight town in kingdom hearts 2 we also had twilight town as well but in kingdom hearts 3 it was very emphasized that it was basically a hub slash base because a lot of stuff is sort of useful there like you're able to do various things such as upgrading your keyblade now i'm i'm aware that in kingdom hearts 3 you're able to upgrade your keyblade at any moogle shop but they have their own dedicated moogle shop there there's a whole gummy shop over there as well um you're able to cook food you're able to use a postcard system there's various things that you can do there but it wasn't really utilized as much just like twilight town and kingdom hearts 2 it was just sort of there 
As someone who covered Kingdom Hearts 3 for the longest time before it released, uh, I haven't really seen, like, developers or even Namor himself really emphasize about a game hub. Really interesting on the direction they're going to. And that's why I'm set to believe, I'm like, oh, maybe, yeah, truly Quadratum itself will be open world. If we're looking at Team Osaka's previous history of their work, their project of Kingdom Hearts 3, they did actually attempt to make an open world experience. It was really emphasized, uh, you know, before Kingdom Hearts 3 was released through its press info and news releases that Kingdom Hearts 3 will have bigger worlds. There'll be, there's stuff in these worlds that you can see. You could explore more in these worlds compared to any other Kingdom Hearts games. And they weren't lying because that's absolutely true. Even though it wasn't necessarily the best experience to have, I think they still managed to increase the value on the exploration within Kingdom Hearts 3 or at least, or at least make the game more interesting as you're traversing through these worlds within Kingdom Hearts 3. It seems like they're not giving up on this idea on making a better, you could say, quote unquote, open world game. Even though Kingdom Hearts 3 wasn't, again, it wasn't advertised as an open world game. They just told you that this, these worlds are going to be more expansive and the, uh, you'll be able to literally see more stuff within these Kingdom Hearts worlds. And they're absolutely true because there is stuff in Kingdom Hearts 3 where... Literally, in the first world, which was Hercules, at Mount Olympus, there is actually a quest line to do for Kingdom Hearts. If you come back on what just happened from the opening of Kingdom Hearts 3, which was the destruction of Mount Olympus, there is this whole aftermath uh, sequence when you come back to the second visit of the world, and it, you see literally everything uh, reconstructing itself to what it used to be. You see the people there it become sort of a hub area at Mount Olympus at a, at this certain place. And if you go around and talk to each and every NPC, one of them is a boy, a young boy, who is searching for his Hercules figurines or statues. It becomes this whole quest line. Uh, I only found one gold Hercules statue. Uh, which I gave, which I'm going to show you in the gameplay. But there is this whole quest line in Kingdom Hearts 3, which is not really uh, known or really presented as well to the player. Because, again, it wasn't their objective to make Kingdom Hearts 3 like this open world experience. It was They were still focusing on the old school format of what Kingdom Hearts is, usually is. And that's honestly perfectly fine. But I thought it was very interesting of how there was this attempt to make Kingdom Hearts 3 this expansive world to where you're able to be able to do quest lines. I thought it was interesting uh, to do that certain quest line because there isn't really quests in the Kingdom Hearts series. There isn't really a open world format within, <laughs> within any of the games at all. And that's why that whole quest was unique to me even though it's completely irrelevant to do there's really no reason to do it i'm not sure what reward you get because i never completed it myself but i don't think the reward is as big also they definitely make a lot of these worlds in kingdom Hearts 3 very detailed like if you go to the tango world there are definitely missable interactions with rapunzel as rapunzel is traveling with you and this all happens obviously when you meet Rapunzel and she goes in, uh, in your party and since this is Rapunzel's first time going outside she's actually going around and checking out a lot of this stuff around the, uh, your environment and I think that's what actually makes that world very unique because you're actually experiencing and interacting a lot of stuff with her those little missable interactions there's really no punishment or any value to do it there was really no incentive at all to explore with rapunzel or experience these certain things with rapunzel you could literally pass all these missable interactions with her and you would still be okay 
And yes, you know, like, again, to some people, it just wasn't the best to experience, and that's totally understandable. But what I'm just trying to say, that it was the devs' vision to work uh, on these worlds to make them very detailed. It's why there was so much verticality to these worlds. It's why there's so much stuff to explore. That's why there's a lot of more interaction, such as the Tangle world. Because it seemed that they wanted to explore that sort of realm, that genre, um, but they, it wasn't as properly executed since they had to focus on way more other things. Now that they're fully experienced using the Unreal Engine and seems that they're going all out for Kingdom Hearts 4, really want to reuse these ideas and perfect it. I actually talked about this in my analysis video or maybe in a previous other Kingdom Hearts video. I made a lot this week, I apologize. I can't remember. Ever since the Kingdom Hearts 3, I, I stated this, ever since the Kingdom Hearts 3 reveal trailer, which was that fake demo or rendered demo uh, from the 2013 trailer, they always envisioned Sora doing a lot of the parkour stuff. And it was again presented uh, in the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer. And it seems that they don't want to give up on that idea. And with how a lot of stuff is being described with Quadratum being this expansive, realistic world that you could see, it seems that they also want to explore and not give up and also want to perfect that little open world. I wouldn't say really, an, it's not really an op a true open world experience, but they want to give that open world illusion. Just like how they attempted to do in Kingdom Hearts 3. Now that leads on to the next topic of my video, which is how would this whole open world gameplay work for Kingdom Hearts 4? Now let's just talk about the whole apartment complex in this game. Again, by Tetsuya Nomura himself, he said that it'll act as a base or hub for the game's early stages. And that's actually interesting. I make I may make another video talking about early stages or like the pacing of Kingdom Hearts 4. Him mentioning early stages kind of sounds a bit, you know, interesting. I guess I'm going to kind of talk about that as well right now. I think I predict that when it comes to this whole open world stuff, right? I think Sora may have multiple apartments depending on what part of the area he's in. So currently, I guess his first apartment is going to be at Ayama, T uh, Tokyo. And then he may have apartments somewhere in Shibuya or wherever. I have no clue. I don't know certain places in Tokyo. So that's why I just threw out Shibuya and all that. I think that may be the case. And within these apartments, they're going to offer you like Sora actually cooking because cooking was a thing in Kingdom Hearts 3. So I'm pretty sure they may bring back food in Kingdom Hearts 4 of Sora cooking in his own apartment. It's got to be a disaster, but at the same time, he got to get those buffs. And it's kind of hard to really just put out and spurt out random stuff because I'm trying to be very accurate or at least state a accurate hypothesis of like what will happen uh, for this open world quote unquote open world experience starting out with the apartments but if I were to again just make a wild guess maybe the apartments as well will offer wardrobe options such as you customizing Sora uh, with different accessories or maybe you could change various colors. I know it actually interferes, like you could argue that it'll interfere with Tetsuya Nomura's vision on his um, appearance for Sora and his literally his whole entire looks. But a wardrobe option was a thing back in 0.2 in Birth by Sleep. And I was very surprised that wasn't a thing in Kingdom Hearts 3 because I really wanted to have more customization in, you know, just in any Kingdom Hearts game. So I thought customizing Aqua in 0 0.2 was pretty cool. Yeah, that was never a thing within Kingdom Hearts 3 and I was surprised they kind of scrapped that idea. So I think if they're reusing ideas, because as what I said, they're completely reusing their ideas for Kingdom Hearts 4 and they're going to try to perfect it or use reuse these concepts and bring them back to life. So 
seeing the wardrobe options is it may be a thing and again it's incredibly hard to say like what other things that Sora's apartment complex can offer but they may also bring back the postcard system since you know again it is his apartment and mailing is maybe a thing it's gonna be interesting once more news comes out but those are like the best guesses i could think of as of now let's actually talk about the actual quote unquote open world experience how will the map be will it actually be like elden ring and breath of the wild no i don't actually think so it is not gonna be a true open world experience neither would it be like breath of the wild or uh, Elden Ring. We're not gonna get that type of big of big of an open world experience. It, but if they actually do do that for Sora and Kingdom Hearts 4, I would actually be very very impressed. But I'm again I'm sort of being realistic. I know I'm being mean, but I think that's just the reality of stuff. You know, like if this game is, you know, hypothetically speaking, coming out within a few years. Uh, I, I don't I don't see them actually making a big open world. I see them making an quote unquote open world experience by having the Yaxa format. If you're familiar with the Yaxa series, which I'm actually gonna show later on or within a few minutes, they do a great job on the open world format of keeping the world still alive, but you're able to do various activities to do within uh, wherever you're at, where you're in Yokohama whether you're in Kamurocho, within the Yaxa series, the reason why I'm such, I'm very fond of it is not just for its story and gameplay, but it's also nice to really explore around these cities within Tokyo. I think that's what's really great and also other places outside of Tokyo. These maps are actually very compact compared to any open world game. The thing is, the map is very detail there's stuff to do there's stuff to interact with and again there's quests to do and again of what i mentioned the various activities that that just keep on going forward so it doesn't feel repetitive and square enix themselves or himosaka they may go for that certain approach another format that's very similar or maybe the same thing is neo the world ends with you if you actually play that game it was very similar to a open level format now what i mean by open level is the exact format of what yaksa is you're literally in a whole compact map and you're able to interact with various things and do various stuff activities but with the world ends with you neo the world ends with you to be exact that game is actually maybe considered an open linear experience even though it has a very similar format to the Yaxa series. Being open linear doesn't necessarily bring in that immersion of having dynamic scenarios uh, within this open world illusion, which typically open level games such as Yaxa do. And that's not entirely a bad thing of being very open linear because Kingdom Hearts 4 can be in an open linear game because Final Fantasy VII Remake actually was that. It's a very open, linear experience. There's definitely a lot of moments of yourself as Cloud is you going into or traveling within a straight line. You're not necessarily going back. But there's definitely moments in the game in certain chapters where there's exploration evolved, and again, with the various activities and especially involving yourself with other quest lines, having an open linear experience isn't gonna be as bad. I personally played the Final Fantasy VII Remake and I still consider that game the greatest game of all time. It's still my favorite game. It would be number one on my list. Even so, of it being open linear, I really do love the fact of what makes an open linear game fun is again of what the content what the actual content is and with the content provided in the final fantasy 7 remake there's a lot of interesting cool stuff in there even though you could see it as very simple compared to an actual open world game but if we were to talk about kingdom Hearts 4 being an open world experience it's definitely gonna be like the Yaxa franchise. 
with how they do their open level format. But there's definitely going to be moments in that game, especially when you're roaming around quadru Quadratum, it's going to be very open linear. They're going to have both of these level designs into this game because I'm pretty sure they can't truly make an open world experience for various reasons. And especially, they're still new to this stuff. There hasn't been a Kingdom Hearts game that actually emphasizes on the illusion of having an open world experience. And like I said, Kingdom Hearts 3 attempted that. It was an attempt. And that attempt and execution of it, personally to me, didn't go so well. With that being said, for the next segment of the video, I will be doing a live commentary over a Yaxa game and showcasing how it's like and what potentially Kingdom Hearts 4 may be like of how they're going to approach their own game. Also, before we actually hop into this live commentary, keep this in mind that I do believe that Quadratum will only be the world where it's actually feel like it's an open world experience. Other worlds, like the Disney worlds you could say, such as Star Wars, they're, gonna, they're not going to be as open world. I'll get to more in detail about that later on in this video. Now, let's hop into Yaxa, shall we? Hey guys, I am in Yaxa Kiwami 2. And sorry, kid, you talking about the storyline here. So, uh, this is a new Game Plus save file, and for context, uh, Kiwami 2 was released back in 2019. It is the remake of Yaxa 2. And honestly, it's one of my favorite games um, within the Yaxa franchise because of the storyline and the various activities that you can do in this game. Also, the, I love the art style. This is also under latest game engine, in-house game engine for Sega, and it honestly looks so good. Um, but the frame rate is very low. This is the PS4 version. Unfortunately, there is no like any sort of PS5 upgrade or any sort of frame rate up, uh, upgrade uh, other than you getting it on PC, and I think you could play it on 60 FPS. But, so, I want to talk about this because this is very important uh, within the uh, open world aspect of stuff and why I really enjoy Yakuza. So if you go here, if you just open map, this is pretty much the map. It's 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 pretty small. Um, there's two maps in Yakuza Kiwami 2. So there's Kamurocho, which takes place in Tokyo, and this is right now I'm currently in this store I mean I'm within uh, Sotenbori. Sotenbori is actually located in Osaka Japan but not that like it makes a big difference but um, again look how very compact this map is there's there's really nothing much to explore here but actually when you're here there's stuff to see the environment is more detailed Things are more alive. Like even listen to the sound. I'm gonna turn on the sound. It sounds really good. We go in here. I love it. What I love about the Oxus series is their ASMR for their sound. But yeah, as we go over here, I just want to show you guys like a quick little tour of how beautiful this game is and what Kingdom Hearts 4 can even do better. And this is like the uh, Sotenbori River. And you see how beautiful like this game literally looks? And this is what I'm saying, oh sorry. This is what I'm saying when it comes down to Kingdom Hearts being an open world experience. I'm pretty sure Square Enix does want to make Kingdom Hearts look like a game or make they want to make Kingdom Hearts 4 into a game like this they want to really perfect that realism since this is like the only chance they could have for the series especially at the current phase that they're in for the game and uh, again if they attempted to to do this there's there's stuff to see so if we go over here you see how in the map there's actually stuff to actually interact with and um, and also there's side quests. The blue markers here are side quests. I'm probably going to initiate a side quest. But there's also other stuff that you could find throughout the map through these little hints here. So if I go over here, there's a green arrow over these guys. I go take a look at it. 
And oh, so this is not a hint. This may be potentially a side quest, so let's just keep on going with it. And there you go. We initiated a side quest without even knowing. I don't even remember doing this. It's been a long time. So yeah, you could intervene. Sorry, that's not my problem. And look at this. Literally, Kingdom Hearts 4 may initiate side quests. And let me actually get on with this side quest and let me explain how side quests may work within Kingdom Hearts 4. So this is what the what I mean when it comes down to dynamic scenarios in the game. Now, dynamic scenarios within Yaxa aren't the best, and I can't really speak on Yaxa 8 and how it's like, but there's definitely dynamic scenarios in the game where a lot of stuff passively happens if you actually bother to interact or discover throughout the map. Luckily, within this new game plus, I had no idea that this was actually going to be a side quest because normally they they give a they give normally hints on where to go if you follow those green arrows they typically open up dialogue and give you hints on where to go around the map and it will initiate like another sub story or side quest within yakuza if kingdom hearts 4 is actually going for this open world goodness i hope they actually do something like this again there's more density there's more stuff to interact with more stuff to see and also the creators or developers don't have to actually work on creating such a big map they could work on this compact map and make this place very entertaining and uh, now this side quest opens up more stuff for kiryu uh in terms of uh i guess you could say maybe item uh, like other items and such and there's also stuff scattered around uh, Osaka, or at least Sotenbori in, in this game. Also here, what's really cool is the vending machines of like what I really like. Look at this, here, here it is. Oh, I have Max. It, they sound really good. I don't, I don't know, I just, I just love buying, you know, like stuff from the vetting machines in this game just the little details to this game is really cool and that's why i'm saying it's very important to have something you know like this within the open world of kingdom hearts 4. but anyway yeah let's talk about things that you could find within this map so you're able to open up i mean open up these lockers but in order to open up these lockers there's stuff scattered around like the whole entire map and you could find stuff that you could pick up which are uh, these keys when you open up these keys, you're able to uh, open them. Uh, over here, I'm able to open up this one because I found one earlier. And they give like, and they give items. Something that Kingdom Hearts uh, was also trying to do, because like I said, uh, in the Hercules world, Kingdom Hearts try to make you do this whole scavenger quest uh, just so you could find the Hercules statue for that little boy, and. There wasn't as much of a big reward to find those statues, neither you're, you're not really missing out on anything, but it, like it was it was nice that like they or I found it I found it very interesting they attempted to do something like that. And I want to talk about the discussion of how things are they want to reuse a lot of their ideas and perfect them now that they're, they understand and they're very experienced with the unreal, they want to perfect that, and I'm, and I potentially see Quadratum, not just being a place for it being a big open world, quote unquote big open world experience, but it's Quadratum is gonna be a place where Sora is gonna be running around and doing side quests, finding stuff, and scavenging for stuff. I think those um, little things uh, within Quadratum are really gonna be good. Now. Will the Disney worlds be actually like, let's say, open world? And I wouldn't say it's going to be very open world, like I said. It may go open level, but I say it, it may be very open linear, just like how or just like how the other worlds within Kingdom Hearts 3 were. A lot of the worlds within Kingdom Hearts 3 were very, I wouldn't even say open level, they were very open, they were very open linear with a lot of verticality into those maps. You could see it a lot in the first world of Hercules, you could see it a lot in Toy Story. I also want to add on, when it comes on to um, the Disney worlds being 
open level or at least give that open world experience. I don't necessarily think that these Disney worlds will be like that. Maybe they will. You know, I don't want to doubt them. I guess it really depends on how many worlds they're making. Let's just say if there's only going to be like five worlds in the next Kingdom Hearts game or maybe eight. Or no, I, yeah, I would say five. I would say five worlds, right? And they really focus on the detail of those worlds. Then yeah, maybe they may be like, they'll give that open level or open world experience. If they're giving a lot of worlds, uh, that's a lot of stuff to focus on. And especially with how designing a map is very important in games and actually take a lot of time to do. It may be an open linear experience just like how KH3 was. Like if you looked of how KH3 was, they actually, again, I keep saying this. And if you personally played it, they, they tried to go for this attempt to give that open world experience. Especially in the Pirates of the Caribbean. How can I actually forget that? Literally, there's this whole thing of where you could literally discover outside of the whole dock area and explore to other islands on your boat with Jack Sparrow and ha have this dynamic dialogue just random dialogue that you would not normally hear and I thought that was pretty cool I think I, I really enjoyed the Pirates of the Caribbean world post KH3 because when I was actually trying to 100% completed at that time when it first released um, it was nice to really be exploring around these islands and actually seeing new stuff within that world and I, I really do think they want to push that sort of um, design into KH4 where you like they want to encourage the players to have much more exploration within these worlds and I do highly agree see look more scenarios in here see even though it's not marked on my map uh, it's just randomly here, so let's actually help her. The thing about it more, I really do think we're gonna... I really do agree on the concept of us exploring these Disney worlds. Because I think it's really important to have something different within these Kingdom Hearts games. Because they've been very linear and it's been always focused on action. And not that I'm doubting the action for Cage 4 because I think the action is honestly going to be very different compared to the other Kingdom Hearts games. I think this whole direction of Cage 4 is going to completely be surprising and, and different. Um, but I think if they also try to focus on another part of the game, I know this is such like, this is also a concern because if, if they focus on way too many things, like one thing that you love about the game, which is maybe the action, can be a bit like, can be not as pr prioritized. And that's how it pretty much was in Cage 3 since they had to focus on recreating a lot of the stuff in their development, trying to know how to use the Unreal Engine. So many things in, in uh, throughout the development of K3 they had to worry about and not really prioritize as much. Them prioritizing the stuff that they actually want to do is going to be interesting. But I really do hope they execute the open world experience right and actually do what I'm, I'm actually hoping for, which is the Yaxa format. Again, like I said, like you go in here, like, just go to, like, Sorky, just go to, like, random stores and, and have food and stuff. Like, I, I think I think they're really cool when they add that sort of detail. Like, here, look, look, I'm gonna just make Kiryu, like, just eat whatever. And it show animations of Sora eating, all that sort of stuff. Um, again, it's it's very worrisome. Like, as a fan, I, I am worried. I am very worried because of how they might not prioritize the much focus on the combat, which Kingdom Hearts is known for, and I always love Kingdom Hearts for its combat. Combat is always comes first for me. But again, it would be nice to actually see them do this different approach and focus on the open level design for KH4. Quadratum, which is going to be the whole open level design of Cage 4, while the other Disney worlds will give the like um, open linear like experience just like Cage 3. I don't mind that one bit. I just hope things go well on on what they plan to do uh, for all of this. I really do hope they really focus on on the stuff they want to do and not get really be like distracted. You could say on these certain things uh, uh, for the game. So now that we sort of got that out of the way, I kind of just want to talk about how potentially the cage for open level or open world, quote unquote, open world format is going to be like. Again, I really do believe Sora may be alone within this world. And 
uh, Quadratum is the place where he's able to just f roam freely and discover these certain things. And as a player, we're going to be very engaged within this Quadratum world. And with, let's just say, let me backtrack to talk about how the Disney worlds may potentially be. If they're being open linear and adding multiple worlds, that's completely fine. Or let's just say, hypothetically speaking, they're limited to only five worlds, but these five worlds are going to be very expansive, right? They're going to be very huge um, compared to any other worlds of Kingdom Hearts, because that's pretty much how Kingdom Hearts 3 was. These worlds were actually, actually humongous compared to the other Kingdom Hearts games. Like, their maps were very detailed and more vast compared to Kingdom Hearts 2. Or, you could compare with Dream Drop Distance, like, Dream Drop Distance did have like a larger map in terms of its scale but there was like nothing in it it was pretty pretty dull or you could say empty uh since it was just from the 3ds game they couldn't do much with it let's just say cage 4 does that attempt on having only five worlds but you're gonna get so much detail much more density within these worlds because primary focus is to make these worlds much more engaging compared to any other world throughout the series or worlds throughout the series i also think there's another potential uh thing to think about if they're going to approach this as well is that since riku is actually going to quadratum or going there to find sora we might have a dream drop distance part two or at least have almost the same format i, I don't think they're bringing back the drop meter or whatever but we're gonna be switching off characters like so like we're gonna be playing as Sora for obviously majority of the time, but there's gonna be times we're gonna be playing as Riku and and he'll be able to have his own abilities and such, just like how it was in Dream Drop Distance. So that may be another thing. I know I mentioned before that the open world maybe just be Sora alone discovering these other Disney worlds and Literally in other segments of the game, we have the other cast, other Kingdom Hearts characters and Disney characters uh, go on go on this journey without Sora through these other potential whatever worlds, whether it's the original worlds within Kingdom Hearts or Disney worlds. While Sora does go in uh, in Quadratum and also other Disney worlds to see on whatever Square Enix plans to do and. Let's just say if I am actually right on this certain idea of how Kingdom Hearts 4 is going for this open world, I want to kind of talk about this again saying that if they really do approach this, I really do hope they make this open world experience as entertaining or has the same format compared to other open world games of what they can do. Final Fantasy 7 Remake didn't really bring an open world experience, but definitely the quest lines made it feel like I was within a open world game because of how the immersion of your decision making was there because some of your decisions do matter with the decision making that you do in the remake it leads on to different quest lines and sometimes you may see like a different cutscene compared to somebody so it add that unique flair to the game of where you could have a personalized experience compared to a very linear experience that everyone's gonna share together and th i thought that was really cool and i do hope cage 4 has its own unique take on the open world experience and especially with how many game developers and creating these AAA games to the gaming industry with these AAA titles, they always feel tempted to make an open world game because that's the standard. That's what apparently all gamers love. So again, I'm pretty sure Cage 4 will try to go for that attempt to reach that requirement or that standard, but that could also be the problem. Again, it is very worrying but at the same time, I'm very curious on how they will actually approach these certain things uh, in their level design. I really do hope a lot of stuff is very engaging. 
Square Enix isn't the best on approaching open world games, but I really do hope they do make it unique in some sort of way. Playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake did give me hope on them thinking like, hey, we could actually improve and be better on the illusion of this open world experience and maybe we can now apply it to Kingdom Hearts 4 with Quadratum. With Kingdom Hearts 3, as much as a lot of the worlds are very vast and way bigger compared to the any other Kingdom Hearts worlds in the series, a lot of it was empty and a lot of it just felt bland and there was nothing as really unique other than it having its own Disney skin. So I do hope things get way more interesting for these worlds or at least Quadratum uh, having this open world experience. And I definitely see Sora running around free roaming doing these quests, these side quests and other various activities such as mini games throughout Quadratum. And then outside of it he's gonna have his own journey uh, discovering these other worlds. But we'll definitely see how they will do it. Comment down below how you guys personally feel about this open world cage 4 game. Do you think it's actually scary to have it because they will be f seemingly focusing a lot on that? Or do you actually still feel that they'll give the same format of what they usually do with a lot of the Kingdom Hearts games? Please comment down below. This is a very interesting topic to have because I really do think Cage 4 may go for that route, especially with the industry really aiming for these AAA titles to be open world because apparently a lot of players enjoy it when we heavily express that we need something way more engaging. Please comment down below, drop a like to the video, there will be much more Kingdom Hearts content in the future, especially when I'll be covering as much news uh, as I can, especially when they drop. So follow if you want Kingdom Hearts news, I'm your guy for it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment down below. I really do want to hear you guys' opinions. And dropping a like is very much appreciated. And I hope to see you guys in the future. May your heart be your guiding key. Peace out.